So I know you, um, you're always a pretty positive guy overall. Mm -hmm. the, the last two fights, especially two split decisions back to back. I mean, how how tough has that been for you to to stay positive when when you have results like that? Uh, it's hard. It's not easy. It's hard, you know, because. Hey, I give my best every single day in the gym, you know, I really pay the price to get my W and when you go there, I watch the fight, the people around me say, hey, you definitely won the fight, but I see, you see I see the judge give for the other guy. It's not good feeling, you know, I was, it's hurt a little bit, but it's over, I just fuck on the, my next one. Nice. Does it make you change anything in terms of like the way you approach a fight or the way you know, because obviously I'm sure if you could just mm -hmm, knock everybody mm -hmm, out, that'd be mm -hmm, easy. But, mm -hmm. I mean, do you, do you change anything? Yes, I change a little bit because I always fight to win, you know. I, I, uh, I especially right now in my last couple of fights, I was go there to win. Don't, about, don't think about knockout, just go there to win, you know, to knock risk. It's change. It's change. I'll go there to finish right now. Every, like in 15 minutes. Every punch, every kick, every knee, every knee. And if the fight go on the ground, I will try finishing for 15 minutes because I don't want to pass for 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 what happened with me in the last two fights. I don't want to pass for this again. Yeah. When they came to you with the name Aquan Amir Khani, did you know much about him? I mean, he's been around for a while, but certainly mm -hmm. not you know kind of at the level that you were. Did, did you know much about him? Yeah, game? I know him. I know him. I watch a couple of his fights. He's a great fighter, you know. He talk about UFC. He talk about the best guys in the world, and I know him. I watch a couple of his fight. Nice. Talk to me about your goal here. I mean, I'm sure getting a win is big mm -hmm. and get these losses behind you. Mm -hmm. But I mean, are you still trying to think about rankings and contendership and and that sort of thing? I mean, you, everybody knows your name, obviously. Yeah, I was. I was. I dropped 145 to be a champ. You know, I dropped 145 to be a featherweight champ in the world. And it happened in my life, the last two fights happened, and something like inside of me say, bro, now it's your time. You don't have more time to play the game. You have to go. And yeah, you guys are gonna see a different Edson Barbosa, and I'm here to be a champ. It's that pressure you're talking about, like, you know, you said, now's the time. We can't mm -hmm. wait too much longer to make a run at the time. Mm -hmm. Do you think that pressure will help you in your fights? Will help you push and help you be more aggressive? Yeah, it helped me a lot. It put definitely, I was like there in the training, in the every sessions like that. It's not pressure. I don't know if it's the pressure. It's motivate me more. I think it's not pressure. It definitely motivate me more. A couple months ago, you uh, you tweeted something that you're not very satisfied with the organization and even thought about leaving. Mm -hmm. uh, how's everything going right now? Are you okay with? The no, like I said, I never have problem with the organization. I just want to fight. That's it. I'm a fighter. You know, sometimes I love work. I love my job. When somebody don't give your job, is be sad. You know, I was always ready to fight. Always, I'm always ready to fight. Always ready to my manager call me and say, hey, you have a fight? But when the company don't give me a job, I was sad. That's exactly what happened. I was sad because UFC don't give me a job, you know? But thank God, I had a fight coming up on Saturday. I'm very happy for this. Was it easier after the, what you post? Was it easier to book a fight? Yeah, I, 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 pull, I, I put on my Twitter and in a couple of days UFC gave me a fight. <laughs> it worked. Mm -hmm. um, so you changed division. Do you think going back up about going back up, back up? If I don't know if there's a, a fight that you want to fight or something like that. You know, it's a it's a division that everybody has been watching right now because of Khabib and all that. Uh, do you feel like going back up at some point? Why not? Like I said, I'm a fighter. I love my job. If you have see offers me a good fight, one fifty five, I go up too for sure. But like I said, I come to 145 to be a champ. I want to be a champ at 145. But yeah, why not? I love fight. I, or have you ever seen offer me like 145, 155, especially the top guys? I'm always ready. Anybody at 155 that you would like to fight? 
I think have won one fight in 155. If you offer me, offers me to me right now, I will go up to 155. Let's fight at Paul Felder. I think that's the fight makes sense because I know he knows he don't won my, the last fight. He knows. And imagine me and him third, three fights, you know? It's gonna be a great, 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 great war. And I think if, if you have see offer me this, it's gonna be fun. You, you fought both of, both of them. How do you see Justin Gagey versus Khabib going? Wow, it's gonna be a great fight. You talk about both guys, best guys in the world, you know? And it's a 50-50 fight. I don't see any, any, somebody, you know, better than the other one. Of course, Khabib's like more grappling, just get hit super hard, and, and he's a great, great wrestling too. It's a 50-50 fight. I feel if you get win, I'm not surprised. Khabib win, I'm not surprised. It's, it's gonna be a great fight. When Mac Wong was in here earlier, he was talking about how earlier in his career he wasn't as focused on fighting. He had to cut a lot of friends out of his life to that were pulling him in different mm -hmm. directions. Did you have moments like that when you were young in your career that you had to cut people out so you could focus more? Not really. Not really. I was... I know how to separate, you know, my social life and, and when I need work, training, and... And the most friend that I have is part of my team, you know. When I was in Brazil, 99% of my friends work, train with me, you know. And yeah, like, uh, I know how to separate, you know. Edson, uh, Anderson Silva provavelmente vai fazer a última luta da carreira dele, né, no dia mm -hmm. 31. Queria saber se você tem alguma memória com ele fora, né, do, 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 do octógono, assim, e o que, que ele representa para o esporte? Sim, eu lembro da primeira vez que eu vi o Anderson Silva, eu tinha 17, 16 ou 17 anos. Foi no evento no Vitória da Conquista, cara. Ele fez o um main event de MMA e eu fiz uma luta de kickbox na Bahia. Eu fui no voo jun junto com ele eu já era muito fã dele na época do kickbox, assim. Ele era muito conhecido no Brasil. Eu lembro que eu fui no voo junto com ele eu, caramba, o Anderson Silva, tem uma foto com ele desse evento, então... Para mim, ele é, é, é um dos melhores de todos os tempos, se não for o melhor. E, nossa, tem milhares de momentos assim que a gente pode falar do Anderson. É, é talvez o do MMA do Brasil, sem dúvida, é o maior ídolo que tem no Brasil e, e vai deixar saudade. Uma outra coisa que você falou para mim, né, que você tá. Tinha uma coisa que seu filho falava muito para você quando você ia pro, pro treino. Aí eu queria que você visse esse vídeo e me falasse, né, o que você. O que o papai vai fazer? Vick. O que o papai tem que fazer? Não. Meter a porrada! Oh, meu Deus. Oh, meu Deus. Oh, Every day I go to the gym, he <laughs> said, you go train, so yeah, he said, pai, mete a porrada, and... Fala em português. É. Ele falou isso todo dia que eu fui pra academia, todo dia que ele falava, pai, você vai treinar? Eu falei, vou treinar, filho, pai, mete a porrada. Todo dia ele falava isso, todo dia, não sei se foi a Bruna mandou, mas todo dia ele falava isso comigo, e com essa motivação que eu tô aqui. Eu tô aqui pra, pra... Quando eu estiver entrando lá no cage e pra essa luta, eu tenho certeza que... Isso aí vai ser a força da minha vitória. Tenho certeza. Dele da vitória. O que que o papai for fazer? Pô, pô, pô. Então... Essa vitória vai ser pra eles. Pra mim, meus filhos, meu time, minha esposa, todo mundo. Obrigada. Então, você estava falando sobre os primeiros dias de assistir Anderson back in Brasil, quando você era muito jovem. Can you talk a little bit about you and Marlon together back in the early days? Because obviously that's a friendship that uh, he says has extended for over 20 years. Yeah, yeah. I really have a good time with Marlon for, for, for uh, I'm his friend for a long, long time. And we spend a lot of time together and fight together. Many, many times in Brazil, you guys have no idea 
crazy shows uh, fighting Brazilian kickbox like a small town in crazy crazy spa and today me and him be part of the, the the greatest show in the world you know he's doing the main event I do the co-main event if you talk to me about that couple years ago say no it's not gonna happen because it's too much it's more way way more than my dream you know I feel so blessed to, to have this time with him to to everything happen in my life I feel so blessing to to have this moment with him um, and that, I love that it, did, he um, was saying that you really kind of were an inspiration to him and gave him your job in Florida so mm -hmm. you know how proud are you of him and how far he's come and, and yeah, like I said, it looked like he's my brother, you know. Uh, uh, in Brazil, I, try, I always help each other with everything because it's hard to live the sport in Brazil. I always help with him. When I come to US, I always talk to the guys, say, hey, I have one guy in Brazil who's really good. If you need somebody to, to come to, to teach kickbox and help me, his name is Marlon. It's my friend, I know. And one day the guy say, hey, I really need somebody. Say, oh. Let's bring my friend, and he's coming. It's funny because they're all together. I go to New Jersey, yeah. he's go to New Jersey. He spend a couple of years there. I come back to Florida, he come back to Florida too. He's my brother, you know. He can't stay far away much. And then I remember um, a while back you told me part of the reason of leaving Jersey was just that the weather was hard and you didn't feel you know mm -hmm. good about getting up and going to the gym and that. So. Um, so how much are, happier are you now? I mean, obviously it's been it's been a while now, but how much happier are you being uh, in better weather? And you know, just, just you just wanted to be with America. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do about the weather. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I have a really good time. I learn a lot in, in New Jersey. Like I said, I love the people there. I love all my friends there. Everything, but it's so hard for us to live in there. You know, it's so different of 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 my, my, my country, Brazil, and I decided to move to, to, to Florida and start training ATT and say, wow, I think that's one of the best choice of my life, you know, come back to Florida and train ATT. And right now, 100%, I really live the dream, you know, if you ask me how do you dream, it's gonna be right now, like my life right now. It's, it's perfect. Everything doing right right now, and I think you guys are gonna see this in the cage. And one last question for me: If it ever happened that Marlon had to fight Frankie, what would you do? This is not gonna happen. <laughs> you don't think? Marlon's my brother. <laughs> you know, I love Frankie. He's a, such a nice guy. I love him, uh, you know, I always give my best to help him, he, he always gives my best to help me. But Marlon is my brother, okay. you know. If I have to pick one side, you know, I have to pick Marlon, of course. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay, guys, we need to wrap up. Yes, sorry, guys. Yeah. Awesome.